Well, hey there, my YouTube uh, subscribers, and for those who aren't subscribed to my channel, it's uh, nice to see you here. Um, you may have been following some of my other projects, like the mini snowcat. Uh, it's still sitting unfinished, waiting for the engine to come in. But uh, since the weather's uh, turned quite nice and spring is in full force, it's uh, time to get the travel trailer uh, ready for the camping season. So what I have here is um, two of the main components that I'd like to add to our trailer um, that'll allow us to have a larger capacity battery uh, just so we can not necessarily need a, a, a service site when we're going out camping for a weekend or something like this. This isn't a solar setup, this is just a higher capacity battery bank basically. Um, it should give us a couple days of runtime. Um, we don't have a lot of load. Of course, it won't run heavy loads like microwaves or air conditioners or stuff like that, but it'll keep the fridge uh, running, keep the food cold, and uh, give us some lights and stuff at night. We'll also run the water pump. Um, so yeah, the plan here is to take uh, some of this HDPE sheet that I had uh, purchased for the mini snowcat and cut out a square that is 19 inches by 20 inches and use that as a backer to uh, mount the inverter and the charger both onto that panel. All right, so this is the front uh, storage compartment on our travel trailer. Um, I've kind of decided that I'd like to mount the, uh, the charger and the inverter uh, right on this front panel here. So right inside of that uh, square aluminum frame, or actually I should say not inside, but in front of that square aluminum frame is where I'd like to get it. Um, there should be enough room to mount everything and uh, it'll be somewhat accessible but also not right in the way. Okay, so I've got the inverter and the charger uh, mounted to this backer board. I, uh, I had one placement that I'd uh, drilled and I was going to bolt everything in. And then I changed my mind. Um, so the, the metal frame in the trailer is an inch and a half. So I can't have any screw heads or um, anything on the other side in that area. So I'd originally placed the charger and the inverter a little closer together but I want to have in the middle here a selector um, it'll be a one or two or both uh, battery switch and if I didn't have space between here there wouldn't be an area really anywhere as accessible um, for me to be able to reach it so uh, what I did is I just used some flush uh, bolts, I should say flush screws, and I just drilled and countersunk them. So when I go to install uh, this into the trailer, well, they're completely flush, so they will not interfere with, uh, with the frame, which is good. So next step is to get uh, the, the fuse uh, installed here. It's probably going to go somewhere about there. And then this is a, a 300 amp shunt that will be used for the battery monitor. So the plan here is to uh, mark and drill, and then again, install some bolts from the back side and actually use that to stand it off. And uh, the one side of the shunt will actually just serve as a bus bar to collect uh, the grounds, or I should say the negatives from the inverter and from the charger. The positives will be uh, routed through that uh, selector switch, so it'll basically come from the battery bank through the fuse, and then it'll go to the selector switch. And um, it'll allow me to uh, disconnect the battery charger from the battery system when it's not being uh, used, 
apparently this type of uh, charger, it has a really weird parasitic load where uh, when it's not on and it's not running, even being connected still draws, I think somebody said it was close to 40 watts. So um, if you don't need it online, it's uh, best to disconnect it. And then same thing for the inverter. It just allows you to uh, connect the inverter to the battery bank or have it offline. So yeah, I'm gonna mount up the, uh, the fuse and the shunt there next. Okay, so I have the fuse holder installed. I had to put the screws in from the front through to the back. I really didn't want to do that, but um, I had to just to keep the head of the screw from uh, sticking out past the base of the holder here. If it sticks out any, it's going to actually rub on the uh, cable and it could pierce the insulation. So don't want that happening. And then for the shunt here, I just used a pair of uh, 5 16 they're actually carriage bolts. So on the back, there's just a button. And um, because the HDPE is uh, non-conductive, uh, this will actually serve as an excellent little way to hold uh, everything in. So now that I've got uh, kind of the basic components installed, I'm missing that switch, obviously, for there. But what I am going to do is just start to run, uh, I'll run the negative uh, leads from the charger and the inverter to the one side of the shunt. The other side will get wired out to the battery. That'll be uh, coming in a later video. And then I'll also at least get the positive for the inverter and the charger started up. Uh, and then those will just run around up to the front there where that switch is going to go. And then lastly, I will probably just take the whole uh, board out to the trailer and do a test fit, make sure that it's going to work well. And then I'll also look at um, figuring out exactly how I'm going to mount this. I think what I might end up doing is just drilling through this and then uh, marking the frame inside the trailer and then drilling and tapping that with some uh, quarter inch uh, hardware so that you can basically just unbolt the whole panel and take it out when you need to. All right, so I have everything uh, installed and mounted to the board now. The uh, the wiring going up to the front selector switch is all in place. That's the uh, the red positive wiring here. I also have the negative wiring all installed for the inverter and the charger. And both of those negatives come back to the, I'm gonna talk, call it the top side of the shunt. The bottom side of the shunt will be uh, connected to the battery. That'll be the, the zero volts. And uh, this will actually be used uh, to measure the current draw either from or to the batteries. So it'll give me an idea of um, the voltage and, and then it'll keep a tally on how much, or sorry, how many watt uh, hours are used. And yeah, so the idea here is that um, with the bigger battery, uh, I'm gonna be able to run the, uh, the trailer without having to connect to uh, like a service site. So for that normal operation, uh, power will come from the batteries and will be supplied uh, directly to the inverter. The inverter is going to uh, run through a transfer switch, which will actually uh, select between the shore power and the inverter, but that'll be up in the uh, power converter for the trailer. And so, like I said, under normal conditions, the trailer is going to source all of its uh, AC needs off of the inverter and then uh, when the battery gets low enough the plan is to use I have a small propane powered generator uh, so I'll fire that up that will feed the battery charger and the battery charger will uh, charge up the batteries uh, should take a couple hours and then um, 
once it's all charged up again, you'll be good to go for another day or two. Now, the reason this isn't a solar setup is a lot of the sites where we go, um, solar may not be very uh, high output. A lot, of, um, a lot of the sites where we camp have uh, tall trees and a pretty wide canopy, so uh, you wouldn't be able to get a lot of energy out of the, uh, the solar array. So that's why I'm choosing to use the propane power generator instead. And, uh, that's that little green unit on my uh, workbench there. I have a couple videos uh, coming up uh, with that and the plan is to design, I'm going to call it a generator hush box so that I can put the generator into that box while it's running and it's going to reduce a lot of the noise that you would normally hear from this running in the open and hopefully it can be uh, effective enough that you cannot even really sense or detect that uh, the generator is running so it's not gonna be a nuisance to us or to uh, any of our fellow campers in uh, in the campgrounds so anyway uh, yeah that's where I'm gonna leave this video for tonight but uh, I will continue to document this build and the setup and um, go through how everything is gonna work as it gets installed anyway thanks for checking out the video Nice to see you, and uh, I'll be back soon.